All right, well, um, well done. let's move on to our final wine, um, which is a red wine. And uh, I believe, Noon, it's your turn to pick up. All right. This is, um, well, there's no sign of uh, precipitation or anything. Um, I would say is a, kind of a bright, concentrated uh, ruby red. Um, there is a slight uh, fading at the rim, which I would say it indicates the youth of the wine. Uh, there's, you know, a slight purplish tint going on as well. Um, yeah, uh, I would say this is like a moderate plus viscosity. All right. Okay. I think what's important also, just to pick up on that, I think there's some staining of the tears, and a lot of people will see that sometimes, but um, that's usually a function of uh, warm climate and again maceration and extraction of color. So a new world? Most likely. Okay. But most likely. But there are some, again, generally speaking, uh, it's all clues. You're trying to put together a, a jigsaw puzzle right. here. and No certainties in life. Exactly. Drive fast, take chances. That's right. <laughs> uh, on the nose, uh, the wine is sound. It is uh, it's youthful for a red wine. Very, uh, very vibrant. Um, medium plus intensity, getting a lot of black fruit. Um, really ripe, uh, ripe plum, bramble fruit, black raspberry, cherries, um, even a little bit of blueberry, um, kind of like a, like a fresh off the vine uh, blueberry. Not getting a huge amount of earth on the nose. Um, if, if anything, there's a little bit of kind of like a, a, a dusty clay, um, but it's really, really a minor, minor component. Um, definitely getting some oak notes. Um, there's kind of a toasted. Like, a, like almost a burnt toast edge to this wine. Um, there's some vanilla, um, getting some green elements as well, kind of a eucalyptus, uh, menthol, almost a bit of a dill characteristic. Wow. Uh, there's some crushed uh, dried red flowers, um, like desiccated, like they've been sitting around too long and you're trying to throw them out and the petals just fall everywhere. Um, and that, that kind of spice, there's that, uh, that licorice, that black pepper, um, like a fennel, a fennel aniseed. Uh, but I mean, really what sticks out here is uh, there's a lot of fruit and it also kind of burns a little bit on the nose, get a little bit of kind of like a, like, like a little tweeze on the nose. Just, I think it, it's a little higher in alcohol just uh, from what I can tell. Just okay. A sniff. All right. Well, now the palate, let's see. That's definitely sound, not faulty, and definitely drinkable. That's gonna, this is gonna go down a little bit easily. It's very, very fruit, fruit forward here that I'm picking up. Um, it's, I'm gonna say this is dry. Uh, the body is gonna be a medium. It's not, it's not very heavy. So let's see, fruit. I'm getting a little bit of both for red fruits, and you know, I'm thinking like. Um, uh, Actually, more black fruit, like I'm thinking like black cherry, uh, you know, raspberry, black, black raspberries. Uh, let's see. I want to say I'm not picking up on minerality on this. Uh, wood, I'm going to say probably, you know, New World. So I, I am picking up a little bit of, of oak. Uh, alcohol wise, uh, I would say fairly high. Um, I'm getting a little bit of, it's a little bit of, a little bit stronger, maybe around 13%. So, so. Did everyone have a turn? We did. Yeah. Okay, good. I haven't had any wine, but I somehow missed that. Um, <laughs> roasted flavors, high alcohol, uh, dark fruits. Um, is that guy, is that leading you to a, a warmer climate or a cooler climate? Warmer, warmer climate. Hot climate. Hot climate, and so we're, we're thinking new world as a result. Uh, yes. Okay, so we, I think we agree on that. In terms of uh, region, it's a hot region, so what are you guys thinking? Like real hot. Sounds like it's real hot. It's roasted. That sounds hot. <laughs> New World, uh, south of the equator, Australia. Australia, okay. Yeah. Again, what, it's, it's a process of elimination. What, what is this not? And then it leaves you behind <laughs> with what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not... Uh, this is not old world, this is not 
Um, it's it's a dark grape, but it's not a lot of tannin, so it's not uh, it's not Cabernet Sauvignon, it's not Merlot. Um, there's mint, there's eucalyptus, mm -hmm. spice, there's meat. Um, what gives you all those flavors? Uh, for me, it's, it's Shiraz. Okay. It's Australian Shiraz. Okay. Seth, you're totally, you're no, totally you're on board agree. with that. I totally am on board with that. And I'm okay. absolutely horrible uh, with uh, the regions. That's something I'm I'm, I'm currently studying. Well, just remember, Australia is a hot, yeah, dry so many, place. And there's so many places in Australia that, you know, where this could actually be. Oh, is that? Well, it's a big country. So, anyhow, yeah. but um, I couldn't agree more. So, we all agree, uh, it sounds like we're all in Australia, we all with Shiraz, or Syrah, which is the French counterpart. And by the way, there's no difference between Syrah and Shiraz. It's just the wine world does that to confuse you. <laughs> um, okay, vintage. Pick a year. Young. Young, okay. Oh nine. Sorry, go ahead. Oh nine. Okay. Oh nine. Oh nine. Oh yeah, I, I go oh eight actually. I think there's some, oh, oh, okay. I think there's some oak age to this. Not a lot, but I could see either oh eight or oh nine. Okay. Splitting hairs. <laughs> Seth? Can I change my answer? No, just kidding. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I, I'm standing pat. Well, here are your choices. 2007, California. Cabernet Sauvignon, 2006 Australian Shiraz, or 2007 Washington Merlot. Hmm, Merlot. Uh, 06 Aussie Shiraz. Aussie Shiraz. Seth. Yep, I agree. I I would go with Shiraz for this one. All right. Well, okay, it's our final it wine, and uh, we've done pretty well so far. Uh, I'm getting the mint now. That's very cool. And the answer is, you guys aren't surprised, it's a 2006 Australian Shiraz from the Bendigo region. Hey, I'll drink to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.